All right. I remembered to record this time. Uh, let's see, today I promised you that uh, we talk about references and then um, writing the abstract uh, for the paper to finish it up this week, okay? Uh, how is your progress on running participants? Have you guys got some? Okay. Come in. That's pretty good. Um, oh. What did you say? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, what's your progress on running participants? Oh. Yeah, I think it's going pretty good. Okay. Pretty good experience. All right. I've gotten like four so far. Okay. Well, you know, at least that's something. Right that line four more of our problems. Okay. Yeah, so eight or nine is fine. Have you run any yet? I've got about like 10. Oh, good. Okay, that's great. That's wonderful. Okay. So, you know, uh, this morning I posted one of the intro psychology students. And so if you wanted to run them too, they need uh, credit for their intro psych class. So that's important. Okay, um, as you go through your paper, uh, you're gonna find all the citations that you made, either in the introduction or the method section or even in the results section. And then you need to organize those in a references section, okay? So I have top, typed in uh, APA 7 in, uh, in the browser, okay? And I clicked on APA 7. Uh, let's see, if I go back, it's APA style.apa.org. Okay, so if you click on that link, it brings you to the manual page and to find how to format references, you click on style and grammar guidelines and go to the one that says references, okay? So you wanna make sure your reference list is, uh, is perfect pretty much. Um, let's go to reference examples, that uh, button. And down here, you'll see how to format journal article references and Here's books. Books is here. And so I think you're only using maybe those two. You might be using a chapter in an edited book. I don't know. You know, but generally we use uh, journal articles. So let me go to that first. And this is kind of the basic setup. You put all of the authors' uh, names and the first initials and middle initials if they have one at the beginning, and then you put the year in parentheses, followed by a period. And then the title of the work is very important. I see students make mistakes on this all the time, but you wanna make sure only the first letter, the first word in the title is uppercase, all the rest are lowercase, except after a colon, where the next word starts with an uppercase letter. And then it continues with uh, lowercase letters, unless you have a proper noun, okay? United States is a proper noun, so you'll have uppercase letters on that, of course, okay? So that's the way you format a title. Uh, you know, I've seen students italicize the title or maybe make uh, all uppercase letters on all of the words, and that's wrong. Make sure you do it this way for a title, okay? Now, uh, for the journal name itself, that's the one you italicize and you use uppercase letters on all the important words in the journal title, okay? And then you have the journal volume number, which is also italicized after a comma. And then right up against that, you have the issue number, if there is an issue number, you put that in parentheses, okay? Then there's a comma and you have your page numbers. Right. So let me go to, um, let's see. I probably should have kept sharing that. I'm gonna go to another uh, area. Let's see, I'll go to Google Scholar for a minute, okay. And I wanna find an article on uh, signal detection theory. You guys have already done this, of course. 
Um, but I'm going to pull up the full text of the article and I'll show you where all these things are in a journal article because sometimes it's hard to uh, figure out. Okay. So, how would you format a reference looking at the first page of this journal? Let's walk through this. Okay. You would have Stanislaw, comma, H, right? And you use the ampersand. Todorov, comma, in, period, okay? The next thing is the year. Where do you find the year? It's up here. It was published in 1999, so that's in parentheses, period. And then you're going to put the title. Okay, this title is formatted correctly, and so you just type it just the way it looks right here. Calculation of signal detection theory measures. Um, and then you'll put a comma after that. And then this is the name of the journal right up here. Okay, you will use that same title of the journal in your reference after the title. Okay, so it'll be title, comma, behavior research methods, comma, instruments, comma, ampersand, computers, comma. And then you're going to find the uh, journal number, which is 31. That's also italicized along with this. Journal title. And then right up against the 31, you're going to put a start parenthesis one. And that's not going to be italicized. And then you end your parenthesis, put a comma. And here are the page numbers right here. Okay, 137 to 149, period. Now, if the uh, page numbers are not listed, say on the first page, then you just look at the page numbers. This is page 137. And then I'll scroll down to the very end of the work. And the last uh, page number is 149. Okay. So you can also find it like that. All right. So that shouldn't be too difficult for you. Uh, sometimes, if I'm unclear on how to cite a paper, sometimes I will. Look over here where it says site underneath the uh, journal article. Let's see what pops up there. Okay. It's got it in MLA style, APA style, Chicago style, Harvard style, Vancouver style. Of course, we use APA, right? All right. This has the entire, um, uh, you know, entry, the reference entry formatted correctly. And then all I would do maybe for my reference section is copy this, paste it at the end of my paper in the references section, but I have to do one more thing. And what is that? Uh, this is an old article, so it won't have a DOI. But how should I format this? Should I leave it the way it is or what? Yeah, you want to put it in hanging in then, right? So I'm going to copy this and I'll just uh, open a Word document real quick. All right, I'm going to paste it here. Let me share this on the Zoom so everybody can see this. Okay, and like Daniel said, what I do is just uh, highlight all of this. There's a little down arrow where it says paragraph. I want to have hanging event. And I want it to be double spaced, right? So I'll click on double there for line spacing. Click OK, and it comes out the way you want it to be. All right, and of course, your references page is formatted with the word references at the top. Okay, now let's just grab another citation while we're at it. Okay, I'll go back to I'll go back to the Google Scholar outfit. Let's say I had another paper. Trying to find a book here somewhere. 
think there was one at the beginning. At the beginning, okay. All right, make that. All right, so we have this, and maybe we summarize some information from this, right? This has got a DOI on it too, right? So let's figure out how to cite a book. I go back to my APA website, hit the back button, and now I want to go to book. How to reference a book. Okay. This seems to be a whole author book. Is that right? It's by McNichol. Yeah. So it looks like we'll have to use this format. Looks like we use the last name, first initial, middle initial, year, um, title, formatted kind of like a journal article, except this is italicized, right? And it has the edition, and it has the publisher, okay? So you can see the publisher is at the end. And then you have a DOI if you have one. So let's look at this for a minute. Um, I'm going to grab, is there a site here somewhere? Ah, oh, here's a citation right here. I'm going to grab the citation for this, copy it, and I'm going to go back to my Word document, paste it here. Now, is there anything wrong with the way they cited it here? See some problems, do you? Right. They didn't format the title correctly in the uh, in the uh, citation. So you have to be mindful of that sometimes these you know citation things don't do it correctly, and you have to fix that. Right. The other thing was what. Okay, you need to put this in italics. <laughs> All right, now usually when I put a DOI, I will get rid of this stuff at the beginning. I will put toy here and just use the numbers, okay, like that. That's the way I usually do it when I submit a paper for publication. All right, I'm looking at my reference list and there's a problem here. What's the problem? If you turn in a reference list like this, I'll say, oh, there's a problem. What's the problem? Yeah, it needs to be in alphabetical order by first author's last name. So I'm going to move the M item up above the C or the S item. That's uh, how you fix that. So as you get your reference list together, make sure that you put these things in alphabetic order. Okay. All right, this looks good. Do you have any questions about references? Okay. It's kind of straightforward, right? And you can use the uh, APA website in order to format things. And then if you have questions, uh, you can just email me, okay, and I'll try to help out. All right, but this APA website seems to be a good one for uh, finding out how to format you know, references. Okay. Now, I want to know what an abstract looks like, so I'm going to go here and look at paper format this time. I want a sample paper so I can look at how they formatted their abstract. I'll go to student sample paper like you guys did. And I'll open that up. And I'll share this student sample paper here. All right. Uh, let's see. Let me go down to page two. Oh, they don't have an abstract in this sample paper, do they? So let me close that out. It's, that's no good, is it? Nope. And let me figure out what to do here. I'm going to go back to my um, APA page. I want to find a sample paper that has an abstract in it. So 
I will open up another one. It's a professional paper and I'm going to roll down. And here's an abstract. Yay. Okay. So what do you see about an abstract that um, is important right away when you look at it? Yeah, it's not indented at all, is it? Everything goes up against the left margin all the way down to the end, right? How many words are supposed to be in an abstract? No. Lower than that. Well, you're in the range. What's the range? 150 to 250, okay? All right, so I'm gonna select these words, and then you'll see right down here at the bottom, they have 147 words. Well, does that meet the guidelines for an abstract point? No. So I would have to take off a couple of points for these people's example, because they didn't hit 150 words, okay? Now, an abstract is supposed to be a summary of the introduction, the method, the results, and your discussion sections, okay? And they're just many summaries that kind of fit in there. And that's the way uh, an abstract reflects an entire paper, okay? So I don't know what's from the intro, but I would figure that maybe just this very first sentence is introductive, introductory information or introduction information. Looks like they go right into the method here. And so they have another sentence for the method. They talk about 364 courses. And uh, then they talk about what they collected, okay, SET forms. And they got an average SET score, whatever that is. And then they start to talk about results. That seems like the longer part of this abstract here, which is okay, right? So, so far we have the intro, we have the method, we have the results section. And then they have this one sentence on discussion, uh, summarizing the discussion. So this kind of gives you an idea when you write an abstract that maybe you can go a little bit overboard on results, okay, if you want to. Um, and that's what I do too, to kind of present the information uh, from the experiments. And that's the way you kind of cover the whole paper in a 150 to 250 word um, summary. Now, down at the bottom, you'll notice something interesting. What is this for, do you think? I'd imagine just for this kind of like the way you would like when you're searching for some, for like an article or something on Good. Google Scholar. Yeah, so if you go into Google Scholar and you put in some search terms, well, some of these will make this article pop up. So they have college teaching, student evaluations, online administration, response rate assessment as their keyword. You need about three to five search terms that you'll put in this section, and it goes right below the abstract, okay? The word keywords is italicized and the colon is italicized, and then you'll put your keywords separated by commas, okay? So I guess yours would be probably signal detection theory, discriminability, bias, decision-making, and then whatever your topic is, okay? That's what I would do. That's the way you write an abstract, okay? So what I would do is just go to the intro. What is the most important sentence in the intro? that I can uh, grab, and you can plagiarize yourself in an abstract, okay? You can grab a sentence straight from your paper, copy it, 
and then paste it into the abstract as the very first sentence if you want to. Okay? Because you're writing this and you're, this is your paper that you're writing, so you can plagiarize yourself in that same paper. Right? That's one good thing about writing an abstract. You can do it fairly quickly. It's not too hard. Okay. So you can think about that too. After you've written the entire paper, except for the abstract, you can go and say, okay, what is the most important thing that I said in the introduction that would cue the reader into what I'm going to talk about in the abstract? And so maybe something about signal detection theory, right? <coughs> so, you know, you can start out like that. And that kind of keys the uninformed reader into what you've done and what you're going to talk about here in the abstract. All right, any questions on that? Okay. All right, now let's do this uh, Sunday. I think it's the whole paper, isn't it? Let me go to Canvas and I'll go to Assignments. And so far, you've already turned an intro to your paper, the predictions to your paper, and method. The experiment materials that you're sending out to your participants right now. Then this Sunday, you're going to have to send me your data, which I kind of showed you in uh, last week's uh, lecture and also the week before that. So you already have a model where you're putting in your data into an Excel spreadsheet, right? And calculate. So I want that on this. Link. And then I want your whole paper, which is almost all written into it, right? After you get your results, you'll write your results, you'll write your, your discussion, you'll finish your references section, then you'll write your abstract for the second page, and then you're done, right? And then you can submit it. Okay? So the reason I've been doing this uh, kind of in pieces is to show you how real research is done. I mean, you know, usually when I uh, start a research project, I'll read as much as I can about the topic that I'm going to study first, and then I'll make summaries of some of those important papers and start to construct a nice logical introduction section. And then I start to think about, you know, what am I going to do in this study? How am I going to make this a unique study that people would publish in a journal? And then I'll make predictions based on that and I'll write a method section, okay? Before I even start. And then I'll go ahead and I'll get uh, permission from the Institutional Review Board to run the study, okay? You have to do that if you wanna do your own original research. We're just doing classroom research, so that's not necessary for this, okay? But that's what I would do if I were doing a project for myself or with students. Then after we get approval, we'll figure out how to recruit a sample and get participants. And then we'll produce our experimental materials just like you did. And then we'll uh, kind of pilot it with just a couple of students that have never seen the study before or heard about it, okay? And by piloting the experiment, you get feedback from those people who help you pilot it to make it better before you actually go out and do the study. Okay? And so I did a study that was in the Spanish language, and I have a, had a couple of Spanish native speakers uh, that I ran in the pilot just to make sure that the materials that we had made sense to them okay? and there weren't any mistakes because we ran participants in Mexico and if we go and send out some kind of an experiment to people in Mexico and they look at it and they see a bunch of mistakes, right? That makes me look bad in the university as well. Okay? So that's why we pilot to make sure that everything kind of naturally works. Okay? And then we start to collect data. So here's your data sheet, right? And then when all the data are back, then we can do the results and discussion section and finish up the paper and then find a journal that I can publish it in and then I submit it to the journal and 
They took, uh, let's see, I've got two papers right now in, in two journals, and one of them has taken six months to review it. I don't know why they're taking so long, but I submitted it in August of last year, and they still haven't given me uh, an acceptance or a rejection or a, or a rewrite. You know, that's the three things that they'll do if they look at my article. Okay. Uh, and then the other journal, I just submitted it January the 1st of this year, and they already have it at the recommendation stage. So they're really fast, I guess, and I should be getting some feedback from them real soon. So, you know, if you go into research, it's really fun. It's kind of scary when they're reviewing it because you don't know if they're going to just reject you or accept the paper or ask you for, you know, revisions before they publish it. You know? so that's the fun of doing research. It's really fun to do. And then, you know, your final research paper is that final product that you send in the uh, journals to get it published. So we've actually almost come full circle on the very first experiment that we're doing. You have two things due this Sunday. That's your data sheet and your final product. Okay. All right. Any questions at all? You guys need help with anything at all? Um, uh -huh. The lecture videos for when you went over the data sheets are up on Canvas, right? They're in there, yeah. They're in there? Okay. Yeah, let me go back. Just, I was just double checking because sometimes I'll forget how to do it or like right. to make sure. That's a good question. <laughs> let me go to modules and yeah, you see in week four we went over the data sheet example and you can watch uh, I think it's it's probably this lecture, right? If you want to review the lecture, but the sheet example is right there. And you'll base your own data sheet based on that. Okay. okay. All right. Anything else? Daniel? Nothing? Okay. Have you guys all participated in each other's studies? Here? Okay. Do you have your materials with you? You want to just run each other now? I think that's a good idea. And then again, to the media site students, uh, make sure that if you need more participants, start contacting uh, or putting up your information in the discussions right here. And then if you click on this introduction of later in the semester, etc., cetera, um, then scroll down to the bottom and just hit reply here, right? And then go ahead and put your email address so people can contact you. Now, this is Wednesday when I'm recording this lecture, so you still have a few days uh, before you want to put your final product together. So if you need more participants, just advertise right here on discussions and participate in each other's studies. Okay. All right, so I'll stop this and then you guys can run each other and you know what's due this Sunday.